once again. From the beginning. Okay, so I'm trying to record a video right now. So I'm not going to be looking at chat that much. Um, today I'm going to try to be streaming Escape from Tarkov, and I'm going to talk a little bit about the different challenges and the different fixes that I've gone around so that I can kind of post this up on YouTube and let other people know um, how they can optimize their computers, their games, and random applications that they may have um, so that they can actually utilize the SSD that they may have, especially if they have an older computer. But if they know that they have the minimum specs, uh, they should be able to play the game. But we're going to take a look at and try and tackle some of those in this video. So, Escape from Tarkov is a very read-write heavy game, meaning that it does a whole lot in the background um, when it really shouldn't be. So, for example, I'm just sitting on the main menu right now. If I were to sort by um, image, you know, I have a couple things running here. I have Discord, I have OBS itself that I'm using to stream it. I have Opera open, which is my preferred browser. Um, registry, Streamlabs, a bunch of system issues. That's about it. So generally when games start up, the first thing that they're going to do is load a whole bunch of stuff into memory so that the game can run smoothly while it's in here. Um, and, you know, just access the assets. Like there's this little camera asset that's there, the background image, the any camera motion effects scripts are going to be loaded in. That's going to send your RAM. Um, and then graphics, like this banner here is probably a graphic, that background is a graphic, um, the texture is on here, like the little Big Bus Brother, basically all the coloring on the model, like there's an asset, but there's graphics loaded in there too. Uh, that's all stuff that's going to be loaded at real time so that the game doesn't have to try and load them in real time. So let's take a look what happens if I just throw this over to my real other monitor real quick. I'm just going to like open traders. So I'm going to go to Prepper. I'm going to try and trade with him. Um, so just because I've opened him, you get resources.resources. .resources. Um, my antivirus is now trying to also scan all the temp files that I was looking at before. Um, this is my second run of the video, so there's probably not a whole lot of stuff here. But like, if I were to go into my hideout, uh, this would start going crazy. If I tried to go into play Escape from Tarkov and I like selected my scav, um, all of a sudden, I'm getting a lot of streaming assets. Um, so streaming assets are things that uh, Escape from Tarkov in generally has decided that these don't really need to be in your system memory loaded up. Uh, they should just be loaded as needed. So they try to load up all these asset bundles, and your client asset bundles. Well, this is great and all if you have an SSD. If you don't got an SSD, you got to be having a hard time. So... I have an SSD. My problem is I have a very small SSD. It's only 120 gigabytes. But I have a 2 terabyte data drive, so it'd be fine if I just loaded it there, right? Well, uh, you run into a lot of issues with here. So Escape from Tarkov, in particular, whenever a new character is loaded into where you would be able to draw them, um, new textures show up, new enemies pop up, somebody fires a shot or changes a run state animation, your game might fucking freeze. So that's not okay in any realm. So other games, such as Dark Souls, preload all of their character models, and some developers get crafty in their mapping, and they actually load all the character models that may exist on a map into the map somewhere in the background in an idle state that are always loaded so that no matter what, those assets are available so they don't have to read it from the disk. Escape from Tarkov doesn't do that, and I don't know if it's a meaning that they can't, which may be a fair point. There are a lot of different weapons, a lot of different animations, but most of that stuff can just be loaded. Um, like, effects in general are not that big. They're like short snippets, you load them once, then they send memory and you're good. So it would be easy to just like find out what everyone's loadout is, load all the effects from those weapons, load those weapons somewhere in the map, maybe load their character models or items or whatever they need to do to have it available. Uh, instead, Escape from Tarkov just doesn't. It waits until it thinks it needs it, and then it loads it in. And if that means that someone's firing a shot at you, and you haven't seen that player in your game fire a shot before, that probably means you're going to freeze. Um, so you have a drastic competitive disadvantage in that, because, number one, you can't fight back. Um, you can't really... While your game is frozen, it affects other kinds of things. You can't tell where it's coming from. You can't run around. Um, your sense of movement is thrown off. So you're running all of a sudden. Your game is skipping a lot. Um, you might be missing inputs. Things like that. Like These are not small issues. So 
the main mitigation we have, the main answer we have is just sort of stuff onto the SSD, right? Uh, but if you have a small SSD like me, that's not always an option. So, but there are things that we can do to kind of trigger and fix that up. So uh, the first obvious thing is what can we delete from the C drive? The answer is not much, um, in all honesty. Like most of the stuff is Windows stuff. Um, I have a couple of things, but I mean, they're like tiny little files. Like here's a 200 kilobyte um, CA cert for my web server. Um, I have some libraries and stuff. Like I could throw, least throw PHP over there, but it's not that big. Um, so the main method I use to do it is there's a nice built-in program for um, sysinternals called Winderstat. You can scan your hard drive and see how big everything is. So my hard drive, it actually reads as about 113.6 gigabytes of usable memory. Um, there are system things and things I don't have access to in general, and so partitioning won't show up there, but that's not really too important. We just want to know what's on the drive. Um, so we can sort this by size and take a look at how big everything is. Um, so over the weekend, I spent a lot of time moving files. I cleared up about 64 gigabytes of RAM, or I'm sorry, system uh, RAM memory, ROM, and try to see, like, what can I shove onto my C drive that was on my D drive that I use regularly? Um, my most obvious answer of what I wanted on there was my Steam library games, because that's mostly where I run into issues. Um, other applications, like Windows, browsers, I don't know, Facebook Messenger, Discord, Notepad++, like, these things aren't really going to... I don't, I'm not going to care if they take a, a, a couple extra microseconds to load or whatever it is. Um, so I tried to find what I could move, and... I, it kind of led me to this error where I run into things like, okay, my Windows installation is 16. Can I install that onto my other drive? Well, I explored with this last week, and the answer is mostly no. Um, you probably could, but you're going to have some issues there, so allocate about 17 gigabytes from Windows. Okay, so users file. This is a big one. This is going to be one of our top users, and it's going to have everything that we've ever done on our computer in some form or fashion logged. Uh, what I mean by that is, if we were to go to Windows Explorer, we go to this PC, we go to C users, we go to users, we go to my user, which is just Valza, and any application I've pretty much ever touched, if it has any kind of save file related to it, it's going to show up here and probably have some cache data. Um, so, for example, what's one I might find? So, VirtualBox. Uh, if I've installed VirtualBox, like, they're usually not too big. Like, these are just some XML files, some log files, um, maybe some settings. Uh, all in all, this is only about, you know, less than a megabyte. Okay, I don't care about that. Uh, let's talk about Gradle. Now we're getting into some more program-heavy stuff. So we've got Kotlin, some J um, JDKs, native wrappers. How big is the Gradle folder? Um, okay, so... It's not a not appreciable size. It takes some disk space. It's probably going to keep going. I don't really care because it's over a gigabyte. It's already on my radar. What can I do to get rid of this? So the obvious answer is to move it to your hard drive, right? That's not always possible because Windows is set up in such a way that the way that it accesses files are pretty hard coded. And what I mean is that there's something called the registry. Um, anything that Windows deems necessary when you do an installation, it logs that information to the registry. Um, if Windows doesn't update, it a updates information in here. Um, so, like, if I were to just do a key search to search my registry for Discord, um, I'm going to find a whole bunch of refer file references in here referring to Discord, and one of those is the default icon. Um, so that little icon that shows up in your taskbar, um, what shows up within the program, uh, that's going to probably be defined here as default. So we have our data, and it's just going to be a long string of information that says where this file is located. It's going to say it's in C users, app data, local discord, this app number, discord.exe. Um, and you don't need to worry too much about what the other stuff in here means. It's just some registry information. Uh, but yeah, we can take that URL that's in the registry, and we can plug it into a new Explorer. Now, if this is already seeming like a lot, don't worry, because I'm not going to have you mess with your registry. You shouldn't really be messing with your registry unless you're an expert like me and you know what you're doing. I still wouldn't advise you to have anybody else do this because there's a lot of things that can go wrong, including breaking your PC. Now, for user-end applications like Discord, the worst thing that's going to happen is you're going to change some value and Discord's going to act weird or it's not going to function properly or it's not going to start. Like, you could uninstall, reinstall this. You do something like that with Windows, you're in some, you're in some, for some trouble. Um, so the Discord folder, let's take a look and see exactly how big that is. And you may notice this folder looks a little bit different than the others. 
It's about 760 megabytes. Okay, so that's a non-appreciable size. It's not quite under gigab uh, a gigabyte, so it might not be the first thing we move, but it's still pretty big. It's going to take up some of that usage. So what can we do to mitigate that? So because this isn't our app data folder under our users, we can't really move that here because if when the program tries to get the data, it's not there. Like it's not like an application where we can say, um, like, or if you're like the old school teen, you're just trying to uninstall something you don't want to use the installer, you might think to do this. You might go to program files, go to Discord, if it were here, or it might be under the original program files. So it looks like Discord does not. It just goes to the app data folder. Uh, but like, I don't know, some random folder in here. Like if I wanted to use Notepad++, there's the executable. I open the executable, it opens Notepad++ here. And like, I'm going to have a bunch of coding stuff here open. Um, I'll, I'll close it. Like, you might just think, oh, there's the executable. I'll just delete this folder. Uh, but if I were to actually go back into app data, like, Notepad++ has stuff in here. So, you, that's why you can't, like, delete a folder and say it's gone forever. That stuff leaves stuff behind on your computer, and the uninstaller is meant to remove that. Um, unfortunately, another issue that's happening with games is that they don't always give you an option where to install. Steam does control that to you for an, to an extent, but certain games do have hard-coded limitations. So the way that we find those is they're generally found in one of three places. Uh, if it's in the registry, you shouldn't be playing that game because that's dumb. But there, I have seen some games do that. Um, another place that they could be is that in your My Documents folder, like Call of Duty Black Ops, Cold War. Um, like it's It has some configuration files. That's usually what should be here, are small configuration files. But then you have other games, like, say, if I can find it, Tabletop Simulator. So if you ever play Tabletop Simulator, you understand that most of what makes up Tabletop Simulator are what the other players made and other creators. So they'll make their own assets, they'll upload them to the workshop, you'll download the workshop, and then you can play with them. You can add them to your own map, you can play with other people who have them. If you join someone else's game uh, that where they have an asset that you don't, it might be here. So, okay, so here's a spot, but it's in My Games. You can't copy-paste this folder. If I were to try to copy the My Games folder and paste it somewhere else, I'm actually not going to do it because I don't want to accidentally like lock up my computer because it's trying to do a loop. And I'll explain this symbol in a minute. And it's going to give me an access error. Um, even though I have the highest level of administrator permissions, I cannot move it, even as system root, because it's in use, and it's being captured by this user. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about what possible walkarounds to that probably in a later video, but right now we don't really care about that. Uh, so we have a lot of files in here. Uh, if we were to actually check the size of this whole folder, like the tabletop server was about 250 megabytes, right? That's already like most of this. So it's about 800 megabytes. So what we can do here is we can move the files. So I keep coming back to this. It's like, you can't move the files. How do you move the files? Well, unlike my documents, which this folder itself would not let me move, um, if you did try to like copy this, uh, you actually don't have an option to cut. You cannot cut it. You cannot delete it. You'll get a system error because it's captured by the user. So what we can do instead is we can go to like my games. We can find the individual folders inside of it and say, OK, I want to move this folder. So the way that we actually move the folder is something a little bit unexpected. So there is a title, there's actually an internal tool by Microsoft that we have to use here. Uh, this isn't anything too complicated, but it does require you to use the command shell, which is usually when most people kind of give up. So I've already kind of pulled this up here at a different tab. It's called Junction. It's currently on version 1.07 from July, 2016. It's been around for a long time. Um, Windows has a lot of internal tools that you can use for your reference. If you go up here and go to just this internals, or you can just find it in your own documentation, or just do a Google search, you'll find it. They have a whole toolkit of things that you can use. Uh, Junction is one of the most useful ones. Windurstat, this one that I'm using here, is another very useful one that lets you visualize your hard drive. Um, I hadn't really pulled it up here, but down here there's actually a graphical representation of where things sit on my drive. Like My biggest thing here is my page file, for example. Um, it it kind of lets me pinpoint and see, okay, where are the clusters of data together and how are they organized? Um, so like Rocket League is a big portion here. Um, what can we move? 
So Junction allows us to move files from one computer to another and create a symbiotic link between the two hard drives so that when your computer goes to access the files where it expects it to be, it will be redirected seamlessly to the new location. On the assembly root level, which is the lowest level of code that you can get to, that your machine ultimately compiles and runs on your CPU, regardless of what you use, if it's not just straight up machine go, your assembly instruction is probably going to result to a simple JMP. Um, in games, this is an issue with your Windows operating system. It's really not, you don't have to worry about it. Um, so when it goes to access it, your system's going to say, oh, I'm going to look this up in the master directory. Oh, this is actually located here in a junction. Let's go here and do it. So it's a really, really efficient way to do so something. Um, if you know big o uh, oh, big N notation compared to the original, it's just adding a one. It, it's It has absolutely no extra load on your machine. It's very efficient, um, but it can get messy really quick. Um, so I'll kind of give you an idea of what that looks like too. So if I were to look into the folder that we're just looking at, so like we we're originally looking at Gradle where I just want to point out the size of file um, because you can't just move your user folder, we can use this file. Well, to beat a dead horse to the bound a little bit further, we can move this file. So the way that we do that is very peculiar. We can't just like move it there and then, now if we really were savvy and we felt like we had, uh, I don't know, two decades, we could go into the registry and find all references to this folder and switch it to the new drive. Um, if you have multiple references inside of the folder, you're going to be running into a bad time. Um, so the way that we reroute that is junction. Uh, let's pick one of these files. Uh, one is something I'm not actively using, VirtualBox. So I have something here called VirtualBox, uh, which is a Windows, it's a virtual desktop manager. I can boot up like Windows or Linux or anything else inside of it without having to reboot my computer. And I've created a folder in my data drive called Valza, which is just trying to keep the naming similar. So I know this is my user folder. And we have Gradle. So like now we're starting to see some of the files I've moved. So let's cut VirtualBox and paste it here. So if I were to actually open VirtualBox here, I'd probably get some error thrown about my configuration being incorrect. So I'm just going to open a version of CMD and then I'm going to open it again as an administrator because I don't want to open my taskbar. And now what I can do is I can use this new program called Junction. So all it does is you put in the executable in here, you put your source directory, and then you put the directory that you want to link to. So let's kind of see what that looks like. I'm going to navigate back to my C. I'm going to clear that. I'm going to go to CD user, CD Valza. So I'm in this folder now. Um, so the old folder name was called slash VirtualBox. So let's do junction. I'm going to do the 64 bit. Um, you know what? It's not going to let me do it the way that I want to with the method I did. So let's go ahead and just reopen this. Um, Unfortunately, because of the way that the command prompt works, if I'm not in the System32 folder, I can't access Junction the way I like to do it. So let's just back up. We're going to go to junction junction64.exe. We're going to go to C, Users, Valza, and then our destination folder. So I've just left it kind of organized so that I could keep it presentable. Um, I'm going to put in Valza. And now we have our root directory. So if I were to put this now, normally if I were to put this and it's there, it's just, just going to give me an error, no matching files found um, because I'm targeting a subdirectory. But let's say I want to copy this folder, put it there. Um, I'm going to get an error. It says, cannot create a file when that file already exists. Uh, and the reason for that is because it's actually going to create a file. So now that we've already moved the file, that's why we couldn't do it before. Um, no matching files are found because I haven't targeted something. So let's target the actual folder that we moved. It's going to be dot virtualbox. So let's do dot virtualbox. We're going to type in it here because it no longer exists. We can't autofill it. And it's going to say targeted at and it's going to create this file. On the user drive, we now have a new folder here called virtualbox. It is 100% indistinguishable from another folder to the user except for the symbol because it is telling you that it is being redirected. Now, interestingly enough, if we were to go to this folder, it's still going to say that we're going to see users Valza. 
Now, the way that this is different from other applications is that mostly they use shortcuts. And a shortcut works drastically different. So if I were to go to my D drive and say, I want dot virtualbox, I'm going to create a shortcut here and I'm going to paste it onto the drive. If I were to click on this shortcut, it would now say I'm going to dvelza.virtualbox. And this has to do with how Microsoft has set up Windows to read the file system. Because obviously it doesn't actually exist on the C drive. Um, but we can't just like replace things with shortcuts, so we use the junction. Because Windows isn't smart enough to say there's a shortcut here, it, that would be a slow method of doing it. So now we've got C users Velza. Well, it's like, wait, didn't we just move this folder? Does that mean it's still on my C drive? No, it's no longer here. We can go back onto the D drive, go to VirtualBox, and that you're going to have two different valid file paths for a single file. So we have, instead of moving, yeah, we've basically just created a new reference to this file, except that it's accessed from the C drive. So your SSD is going to still have to do a little bit of work. It's going to have to tell the Windows operating system, hey, I don't have this file, go here for it. But that's like a super quick optimization that you don't have to worry about. Your system's going to take care of it. You're not going to see any performance load from this whatsoever. So I've managed to free up 64 gigabytes with this method. A couple of different places we can look at for this are your users folder as your first option. You're going to have a bunch of stuff in here. Um, anything that's specifically under my games, if you're a gamer, there's this folder is going to get a lot. Um, you might want to consider moving your save games. It these generally aren't too big. There are a couple that I found, like CD Projekt Red, Cyberpunk 77 can get pretty hefty. It's actually a memory leak error with one of the memory files if you played on the old version. Um, like VirtualBox, if you have any programs that load stuff in here, you might want to move those. Um, and generally just any files you don't want sitting on your C drive. Um, this is the first attack. Now, this part is where you want to be really careful that you don't miss anything. So we're going to go to the app data folder. Now, the this is actually sits under my user. So if we were to actually try to find app data here, if you don't have directories unhidden, you're not going to see this file. So the way that you can do that is under the view tab up here, you just have to check on hidden items. Or you can go and do the method I did. You can put a print symbol, type app data and a print symbol. That is a system short key to go to app data. So this by default goes to roaming. We actually just want to look at app data because there's three big folders here. We have local, local low, and roaming. Roaming is the biggest of them all next to local. Um, if we were to look at some of these folders like Seven Days to Die, which is a Steam game, it is 180 megabytes. Um, Minecraft, when you install Minecraft, you're never gonna actually go and open the application. You're gonna use a launcher. Um, but the files from the installation go to your roaming folder. You cannot change this installation. It's hard coded. So that those two folders right there, like that's already a gigabyte. Um, let's look at another one, like Discord. I don't want my Discord installation sitting here. I don't care if it's a little bit slow. Um, it's it's up there. You know, it's 500 plus megabytes. We have a bunch of other stuff: Factorio, Funcom, OBS, Opera, Mozilla. You know, Space Engineers, or not Space Engineers, Star Citizen, the launcher for that, actual Space Engineers. These folders get really big. So we can't move the whole roaming file folder. Number one, the system won't let you. There are things in here that cannot be moved. But for the most part, we can just cut and paste this whole folder. So we do the same method, like we move Minecraft over, and I've created a second folder. I could have nested this into, like, C, uh, D, Velza, and then roaming, but I wanted to keep all of my individually forked things separate. So I've instead, I've created three folders. Um, one is roaming, one is local, one is local low. And under the roaming folder, um, I've cut and pasted my files here. So that just doing those two folders and pro some stuff from out of program files, I cleared 64 gigabytes of RAM. ROM, I keep calling it RAM. Now, there's probably still some stuff. I've only cleared about half my hard drive with this method. Um, if I'm only able to do half my hard drive, you're probably going to be able to do most. Um, I have a lot of stuff in here that I just don't move. And like I mentioned, like out of the half that I cleared, the half of what I couldn't move was system files. 
The rest was just because they were so disjointed and disorganized that I couldn't do it, or they were driver related, like my NVIDIA graphic drivers. Um, I didn't bother to do it. I'm sure you can find your way to do this if you take the time. You know, take a couple hours out of your day. Once you get going and typing everything, if you're computer savvy like me, like this can take you a couple hours if you want to be really nitpicky. If you just want to go through everything, you can probably take about an hour. Um, move st your stuff off of your, your drive. Um, the thing that's going to hold you back is going to be your read-write speed of moving the actual files because you do actually have to move the files. Um, unfortunately, there is no real way around that and you're kind of limited there on the read-write of your speed. So I choose to go one at a time. You might not as you move the files, just make sure you don't skip anything, because if you forget to do the junction, your file system is not going to be congruent, and you're going to run into issues. So, all the tech stuff out of the way, that is how I have spent the last two weekends, and basically my entire weekend that I've been here, and the last couple of nights. Um, I've gotten like two hours of sleep for the last week working on this stuff and learning about it so that I could show everybody else, hey, here's some things that you can do to optimize. Um, so, Escape from Tarkov is one of the most tech-heavy games. And if I were to read this from my SSD, it takes literal seconds to load. If I do this from my data drive, it can take me up to, I think on customs, it takes about 8 minutes to load me into the map. A reserve takes about 4 to 5, something like that. Factory, it's not too bad, but it takes a while. Um, reserve, like on my... PMC, like it can still go anywhere from four to five, but it can take up to eight minutes because I'm loading all those assets. So I'm going to take my scale, which is just a randomly generated character that I get access to every 30 minutes, and I'm going to show you how long it takes them to load. So it should take about a minute or so to match, but let's like let's lo let's look at the first assets it loads. Like it loads the map. That's one of the bigger parts. Um, it's going to go pretty dang fast. I think from the time it starts, it shouldn't ever go above 15, 20 seconds. No, and there's a timer here that we can use to timestamp stuff. So, yep, it's been about 20 seconds. The map is loaded. You can probably hear the chir birds chirping, the background sound. Everything is loaded in now. Um, on the data drive that I use, it would take about a minute and 40 seconds to load into the map. So, not ideal if you're trying to get in at the start of a round, because the server has already started. This is a new round that we're trying to join into if we were playing on a PMC. Right now, we're just dropping into an existing game. Um, so we've loaded the map, and now we're going to try and find a match. This is where the timestamp can get a little bit off, so don't pay too much attention to the final timestamp here. Uh, we're going to try and catch when we start loading. So to right now we're just looking for a game server to join into. This may take about a minute or so. I'm going to edit this stuff down in the video that I upload. There we go. So a minute and eight seconds we start. So this is the part where I notice it starts taking a really long time if you're not on an SSD. So loading loot is one of the longest things to load offwards. There's a lot of files in here. If we were to refer to the uh, performance monitor, that number would keep going up for how many things it's reading. It's really fast on the SSD. So... It's only been about 30 seconds. We've already loaded 90% of the assets. There's one little more part after here that we haven't loaded, because this stuff isn't in the world yet. Uh, we have to actually load all the loot in there. We have to create our loot pools, which are things that when you search something, um, it tells you what you have a chance of finding. It takes literal seconds, like about 10 seconds to create the loot pools. So if we look at that, it's been about a minute and 10 seconds. We're in the game. You're not going to get that experience if you're loading from a hard drive. The the second advantage here is not only do you get faster load times, you load into the game much faster. Um, what is happening? So I played this consistently last night and did not have this issue. I don't know where these white lines are coming from, but I don't think that's a me thing. I think that's because of the area I'm in. Yeah, what is going on there? Well, anyway, don't worry about that, because Escape from Tarkov is on my SSD. Um, I don't know. Maybe that's just the light rays? Nah, it's probably just the light rays from the little cracks in there. Um, the game is running really, really smooth. 
Um, I have not enabled my FPS counter. I probably need to stop real quick and do that. But you can see, like, in top right, my ping is fine, so my internet connectivity is fine. I've already done things to rule that out. Uh, let's see if we can get this open. I don't actually know where that counter is. Some things I should have done before I started uh, streaming, right? Can I not enable it from here? And you can also see like some of my settings I have here. Like I'm playing at the lowest possible stuff. Yeah, okay. There's no option to enable a ticker. But you know what? Just take my word for it. I'm playing at the fastest possible rate that my graphic card is capable of. So my my goal here was not to increase frame rate, it was to increase hitching. So, I'm running on a GTX 1060. It's capable of playing this game. It's not going to do it, like, super, super well. Um, you know, I'm going to at least get the 60 frames per second. I can't really ask for too much more than that. Um, but, like, I'm opening crates. I'm searching. I'm not, like, freezing or anything. If I were doing this on my hard drive, I would freeze every single time I try to open some kind of loot. I'm just kind of running around, like, you can see the lights are changing stuff. Um, there's not really a whole lot of changing of processes going on here. Seamless loot opening. So, now I'm going to do something really stupid. Um, I'm going to just demonstrate that when I fire a bullet, I'm not freezing. If I were to have done that on a hard drive, my game would be pretty frozen right now. I reloaded. There's a tiniest of hiccup when I hit the reload button. If I were to do that on the hard drive, it would be very noticeable. I'd be, I'd be um, kind of glitching out a little bit. I think I had like a one frame skip when I reloaded. Just another instance of Tarkov not actually preloading any of its animations into the game. Now that I fired once, if I did hitch, I didn't notice it. But if I were to hitch, um, that's already done with. I will never hitch again, as long as the game is still open. So I'm not really here to play, I just wanted to show off that, hey, everything's working great. I'm going to extract this train, and then I'm probably going to try and jump into an actual game and do a full round. There's somebody here, and I'm dead. So yeah, these games get a they end really quickly if you're not actually like trying. I, I just basically ran the extract, so that was kind of expected. So let's try doing an actual round, um, a PMC round, which is the main persistent character of Escape from Tarkov. Now this unfortunately takes a minute. Like, so I'm already back on the main menu, right? If I were to have died on my hard drive, I would be sitting here for the next five to 10 minutes waiting to hit this screen. Um, I would have been hitching and freezing the whole time I was being shot, trying to get through the menus and just hit the next button. Like it would take forever. I'm already on the next screen. Like, if I wanted to, I could just immediately jump in. Um, I'm going to just take a really light gear, because I don't really have a lot of stuff. Um, which is kind of one of the things that drove me to make this video, is that I was... I've been very frustrated with this game. I haven't had anything to work with. Like, I don't have anything. I lost everything because of the hitching and freezing. So, I'm just going to buy something that's, like, really, really stupid cheap. Assuming I have enough. Um, yeah, there we go. 9x19 para. So, normally I could trade this in for some knives. I don't really have much. I don't have USD. Um, but I can probably go to Prapper and I can probably buy one. Uh, yeah, 9x19 para. Yeah, so, it, it's in, these, these guns ain't cheap. I don't think I can get a 9x19 para, can I? I can trade for one. I could buy a PM, but I don't have any PM ammo. 
or magazines. Um, I think I'm going to use 762 by 25. Do I have 762 by 25? That's 762 by 39. It's rifle ammo, I think. Hmm. Well, I got about to be screwed over on guns. Maybe I'm going to the wrong person. I remember you being able to buy a gun. A pistol that was relatively cheap. I'm just dumb. I was going to the wrong person. It is a mechanic, and it is the Glock 17 x 19 pistol. So I'll buy that Glock. It comes with a magazine, but the magazine doesn't have any ammo on it. So I'll just load up some ammo that I've got. I don't have a lot, but I have a bunch. You know, I don't have a lot of rip ammo. I have 15 shots. I'm not going to waste it. I'm just going to use a PST. I have nine, 397 worth of it. I'm not worried about running out. Uh, my goal here isn't to try and really get a lot of kills. It's to try and see if I can get any loot and see how smooth this goes. So, yeah, I, if I get shot more than a couple times here, I'm going to be having a bad time. So, I'm going to try and stay stealthy. Um, unfortunately, because I'm using the coal pack, I can't put on a headset. So, my sound isn't going to be the greatest in being able to detect enemies nearby. And I'm going to reserve, so I'm probably not going to get out alive. But, you know, let's try it. We're going to go at night. Um, I'm going to make an adjustment uh, locally on my side. Uh, Escape from Tarkov is really, really dark from my monitor, so I have to go into my graphic settings of my NVIDIA driver and manually crank that number up. So I'm going to unoverride the reference mode. The screen's going to flicker for a second. There we go. So now my gamma is really high. You probably can't see it on your side. Everything's really brighter for me. Another little trick if you're using NVIDIA. Um, I guess I'll insure all. Maybe if I'll get lucky. Yeah, I don't have enough money to insure my equipment. Uh, is there anything worth insuring that people won't take? I'm too broke to insure anything, so I'm going to cross my fingers. If I die, I'll wait the 30 minutes and I'll do a scav run. I'm going to nom on some food when I can. Potato salad. Well, this is pretty much your standard map. At least if you're low level. This is not post-wipe. I just gave up playing this game for the longest time. Because it ran like absolute horse crap. So, I'm only level 4. Whatever, no big deal. Let's take a look and see how long it takes to load customs. Less than 30 seconds to load loot. Less than 3 seconds to load loot tables. I'm already in the game. The game has not actually started yet, because I'm joining on my PMC, so we're actually starting at the very beginning of a round. But we all spawn it in at the same time. Or, if you're, you're not there in time, you spawn late. So if you to take 8 minutes to load, you're joining 8 minutes late into the map. If you have an SSD... This is usually when, if you're the asshole kind of player, you're rushing other players' spawns to try and kill them before they fully load in. We're waiting for people specifically to load in so you can instantly kill them. I don't do that shit. But if that's happened to you, that's why. Oh, this is a good potato salad. So, 
here's the part where we get to uh, chill for a little bit. So if you're like me, and you have the slower hardware, if you had just joined in the match, um, you're probably still loading loot. I'd say it'd be about a half, about halfway loaded by now. Uh, let's see how long it takes for us to find players. It is a Sunday afternoon, so I am expecting to get games relatively quickly. Whether or not we find enough players for the game relatively quickly, I think we'll be okay. I don't expect to wait more than five minutes overall for a game. I also want to revisit League of Legends on this at some point. Um, for some reason, after the release of Windows 7, these issues became more persistent. I never used to have these issues on older systems. So I don't know if the size of your drives really are an impact as to whether or not this is going to help or not. Whether it's just a smaller drive form factor that's helping. Um, you know, it's a it's an M.2. It's got faster read write speeds. It's, it's still moving parts. You know, it's a solid state. It's fast. I don't know if it's just that or if it's like the more data you put on the drive, the slower it gets. Or it's been so many years, it's slower. Things to take in mind um, for future is find out where those edge cases are to see what we could upgrade. Um, obviously, if you don't have an SSD, this these little clips aren't going to be very helpful. So I only have one magazine. I need to be very, very careful because if I run into more than one or two enemies, I'm in for a really bad time fast. Um, what I'm hoping to do is I'm going to head over to some scav heavy areas like over here in the trailer park. Not trailer park, but the dump. There's usually one or two scaving, uh, patrolling scavs around here. If I can kill one, I can grab his gun. And I can try and get some pretty easy loot here, because I need to start actually putting together my warehouse. And I need nuts and bolts. But, you know, I'll grab what I can and throw it into my alpha case. Until I find something I need. I'd really, if I was really, really desperate, I could just, like, come with nothing, but... If I recall correctly, when you spawn with nothing, um, they rig the game so that scavs already know where you are and they just run to you. So, I tried to bring at least a pistol if I'm going in somewhere. Which, unfortunately, requires me to spend money. Hopefully, you're not doing that like I am after you've lost everything. Like, I might just do a character reset in all honesty. I don't have anything to lose and I'm not really that far in the game. There are no scavs here. I must have got like really lucky or unlucky. You know, if they're not here, they're probably over at Big Red. So let's go run over there. Clench my butt cheeks and hope I don't instantly get shot at an extract point. I'm probably not the only one who has spawned here. Alright, if I'm gonna get shot, it's gonna be between here and entering the building, or somebody already in there. Yeah, it wasn't stealthy at all. I don't see any scavs. I don't hear any scavs. I don't have a headset, so I have to be really careful. Oh, I just hiccuped, so somebody loaded into my area. And I can tell that even on the SSD, like there, this game will still hitch a little bit. But they're going to be far and few between, and you're going to know why you're hitching. So there is somebody in my area now. Oh, I did another one. Oh, did they fix that? I can't just like... Oh, they fixed it! I can't like walk... F a super long distance away from crates anymore to open them. Now, if I was on a hard drive, I would be crying right now, because they fixed that bug. 
I would probably be dying a lot because I would never be able to loot anything. I'd be stuck in one spot forever. So, what are my extracts? It's probably the ZT01. Yeah, okay. 11, 12. So, that's on the other side of the map, as it always will be. I'll check the office building real quick. There we go, some screws, I need those. Oxam, some wires. I have a wrench, so I'll put that away. I don't want to sit here and loot these, because whatever's in them I don't really care too much about. All right. Now I'm starting to get into a dangerous area. When I cross this threshold, I'm going to get into a lot of players trying to cross the map. So I may end up passing someone to not realizing it, or we may end up in a firefight, or somebody trying to hunt other players. And I'm choosing the more risky route of, if there's a sniper, they're going to see me, probably shoot me. I really hope not. Or at least somebody waiting with an AK. Okay, I'm good. So this is another scav spot I gotta careful. Sometimes they patrol this road. If there are, there's usually more than one. Or they'll be up here. So I don't see a scav down there. There might be one here. Look at that. That's a player. So I just narrowly missed somebody. I could engage them. That's not a player, is it? That looks like a scav. One of the Shit, wind. that is a scav. Something pissed him off already before I got here. Oh shit. Alright, I got a Saiga. Try to loot him real quick. Alright, I got his ammo. Ooh, he's got a wallet. Um, fuck the wires for right now. Grab the wallet. Actually, fuck the players. I throw my stuff into his tea bag. Drop my sling. Not much, but it's a little extra space. And I did need a wallet, so that helps. So I'm going to stack my money into. I got nine shots left in this pistol. So half a mech. That would have been a little much longer drawn out fight on a hard drive. And I probably would have been really scared to fight that. Um, so the fact that there's a scav there usually means that there is a couple more down here. Probably patrolling down the road. No, I don't think I saw one coming in. There's probably a scav sniper up on the building, but I don't want to go that way. Alright, I'm starting to overstay my welcome here. If I stay too much longer, I'm going to get ambushed. Cool. He just reloaded, so I have a full magazine. Now, my current outfit is I'm really short range and I'm in a really open area. So I really have to hope I don't run into anybody. Because I'm not going to be able to close the distance. I don't see any scabs over there. Sometimes there's some, like, patrolling this area. Like one. I've heard a lot of gunshots. Maybe there aren't a lot of players on the map. <laughs> Nothing in here. I thought I saw something for a second. Alright. So 
usually for the people who are really heavily kitted, this is where I end up running into them. Uh, if I do, I don't really stand a chance in hell in killing them, so I'm just going to try and get out as quickly as I can. This is only buckshot, so I have to aim for the limbs. Alright, I didn't bring any meds either, so... If I get shot, I'm in a real bad spot. So I won't make it out. Uh, I think they're at gas station. Oh yeah, you hear that? Those bullets. They're hitting metal. So, I don't want to be here. There's a scav there. there there's probably Rashal and his group. Oh wait, I can't climb under there. Damn, I have to go around. I might be able to get under here. Nope. Okay, gotta walk around the pipe. I don't like that. It looks like you can crawl there, but it doesn't let you. Ah, fuck, do I have to go through? I have to go through. I should have gone through the fence back there. I don't want to circle back. Yep, there's a player. So I'm going to do something really risky. I'm going to try and get this guy from behind. I got lucky and I've seen him first. If he has a headset though, my cover might already be blown. At least if he's not paying attention. Yep, here comes- <laughs> Shit, yeah, he knows I'm here. I have no ammo. Shit, 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 shit. Come on. Alright. Yeah, I couldn't get away. I don't think he was alone. Yep. Uh, so, uh, it's free to heal because I'm under level 10. So, do I want to reset my character? Get on my other screen. I'm thinking I want to say yes. Because even with the stuff I got, I don't think I have anything worth money. I don't even think with the parts I have, I can upgrade anything. Yeah, I'm still short of nut. So, I believe I have to go back to the website to reset. I have to look that up. on the website. Why is there so much like moisture in my fries? My hands are getting wet trying to open the close this container. Uh, yeah, I have to do it through the web website. Set the game profile. I gotta go to my email.
Please make sure to close the game and launch it before re resetting the profile. All right. Let's make sure it is completely closed. It is completely closed. Is the launcher closed? There is no instance of it running. Reset the profile. So the profile was reset. As proof, on stream, I have reset my profile today, December 6, 2021, because that is how confident I am. I know I'm saying that as a level 4, but take it as you will. That is how confident I am that I will just have way better gameplay overall. Uh, now my launcher is actually in my D drive, because the launcher, I don't care if it takes a while. All the temp files in any way go, still go over to the C drive, I think. Chrome 100%, Chrome 200%, what does that mean? I wonder what these junk files are for. They're about PAKs too. Huh. <coughs> Let's see if this is any better. Sometime I should like sit down and actually look through all of the sys internals to find out what's all in here. It's just most of the time where I'm looking for something, I already am aware it's existing, which is why I'm looking for it. Store. Why would I? Oh, Active Directory. A lot of this stuff is already uh, built into Windows. Some of it has to be downloaded. Append new. The move file X API. That would be really useful for uh, PHP applications. Do they have their own built-in software? I wonder if it would be smoother if I combined it with this. Uh, this might be something better that's run from shell. Yeah. I would probably wouldn't want to call this from a programming language. I want to call this from a compiled program that needs to do something. Share and run. Interesting. See, look at that. I'm learning stuff today. Like, I might use this later to check my network drive stuff. I shouldn't have such weaknesses. That never hurts to check. Alright, so I'm gonna pick fair, because that's what I decided to do to swipe. I was USMC last last time. <laughs> do I even care what I look like? I really don't. Xander sounds like a scav. about pink pillars. Unfortunately, I do not have a helmet or a mask. So, I'm up to 500,000. I have starting gear. My hideout should be completely empty. I, I could start reconstructing these things. Um, you know, there's no reason not just instantly build the vent and probably the illumination system. Like, I need it to build other things. Um, but, like, my rest space isn't available. I'm going to have to find some duct tape. Yeah, that'll be easy. 
I should be able to do that overrun. Now, the question is, can I go in as a scav already? No, I cannot. I have to wait 20 minutes. Um, so, as a scav, in my experience, a reserve is the best place to go for stuff. I don't need this stupid hat. I'm just going to sell the hat. Uh, we're going to go at night. I'm going to insure all of my goodies. You know, I'm almost wondering if I shouldn't insure anything, because I'd like hardly ever catch it in time. Probably not gonna play this tomorrow. Um, that makes this hard. If you insure with Prapper, it's like take two to five days return. With Therapist, it's like next day. But it costs more. At least it should cost more. Yeah, it costs about twice as much. Not quite, but almost. Maybe one and a half times. It doesn't matter. But at least I know that I have a chance of remembering to get my shit back. Because if it's like two, three, four, five days out there, like, I'm probably not going to play this game back to back. And that's the thing that Tarkov does that like, really pisses me off. It's like they incentivize you to be able to play every fucking day. You can't do your insurance stuff reliably in that case. So, as long as I can remember to launch the game. I think I'm okay. I guess I, uh, my previous profile, if, you know, if it didn't mention anything, it was at least a testament that I'm so garbage at the game that I couldn't do shit. <laughs> I'm fairly confident that I should be good to go. Oh, you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to go talk to the traders and set missions. So if I get any of my mission objectives done... I'm not going to be able to turn them in. <laughs> I'm also doing something really, really dumb. Is that I'm actually going to reserve as a PMC. Uh, there are raiders here that can one-shot you no matter what. And... There aren't a lot of PMC extract points. And, like, the big one that is, most people go to is underground. Um, the scav lands, you have to have a friendly scav to extract with. That ain't gonna fucking happen. Um, and the monk the hermetic door, which requires you to be open, and that is the number one extraction point. So there's a lot of campers, usually. And I just found a fucking backpack. I... That's not usually something I find this early. I'm also underground, so I might run into scav raiders down here. Um, they're basically like scavs on steroids with aimbot. So, I gotta try and get out of here. I'm gonna go up through White Pond. I'll probably find like a bunch of weapon parts down here. Headset, so I should at least be able to hear people coming. Hey, cat tape! I'm gonna need that. It's usually something I struggle to find. That's another thing too. Like just for being here, I can find some usually decently hard to find loot. 
That is PBM or PM ammo. Macro. I don't really want to open the hermetic bunker door. Key for that? I didn't know that that was a key door here. Oh, I hear gunshots. Coming from a decent ways away. find toilet paper? I highly doubt I'm gonna find it in here. Usually don't find anything in the bathrooms. Oh, a fucking window. Contrast. It's so hard to see anything in here. Yo, is that what I think it is? Yo, I found a broken LCD! Alright, let's go. If I can mind a broken G phone, I'm having a good day. A Tetris, I'm gonna shit myself. I found a dorm key. Based on what I've heard, if the gunfire is and whoever shot is coming this way to rotate, we should have been out here by now. They're still pushing and bleeding. Something to sell for money. Now, I have two options. I can wait for someone to go for the hermetic door and then try to blast them on the way out. Or I can run for the hermetic door and hope nobody blasts me on the way in. Which is kind of why I'm buying time in this building. I don't see anybody walking out in the open. This is dumb and dangerous, and I just saw a sleeping light. Shit, is there someone down there? If I get caught here, I'm in some shit. a scav shining a flashlight around. I had a real hard time telling where the flashlight's coming from. Come from that way. Is he in the road? Is that even a flashlight? I don't like this pointing right at the hermetic bunk. Something. No, it's not a flashlight. It's a fucking moon. 
Just making it look like it was a flashlight. Oop, gotta search the bag. Fit two more items in it. Here we go. Here's a really dangerous part. It's to get out, I have to extract with the chromatic bunker. Um, opening chromatic bunker spawns scavs. Scav raiders. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you cheeky bastard! I knew there was someone over here! TTVs and STDs! God damn! <laughs> Oh my god, he was sitting up on the table crouched waiting for me to come in. Oh, I've never had anyone ambush me like that before. That was fucking good. <laughs> I'm just gonna... Clip that. I'm just gonna gonna clip that. I thought the table crouch wait for me to come in. I thought the table crouch wait No uh.
All right. I'm back. I'm going to switch over to my live setup now. The one I usually use. Um, I have to manually set to escape from target. What the fuck is wrong with my capture? There we go. Um, hmm. Something's weird here. No, I guess that's right. Okay, I fixed it. You lost your things at reserve, didn't you? Shut up. You stupid medic. I'll give you enough tourniquets. Uh, I want a pistol. Let's get sla a scav slayer. MP443. Alright. <sighs> Time to clutch my butt group. Uh, unload this stuff. I did manage to get a little bit of ammo. Broken LCD will sell for a bit. Tech tape I need for construction. Uh, is my scav ready yet? I got hell. It's about to be. First, I gotta set my tasks around the crapper and medic. So, gotta kill some scavs, get some shotguns. Yeah, literally the exact same quest I was already working on. So I have made no progress. Or rather, I have lost no progress. I just gained my shit back. How do I get back there? Therapist. So, okay. Yep, exact same quest. Um, Alright. Do I have any masks? I have a hat. Don't get headshot. Let's do a scav run. Is that a fucking suppressed Mosin? No, that's not a Mosin. That's a... It's not a Mosin. Jesus Christ, look at the barrel on that thing. The, the, the scope doesn't really fit the bill, so I'm still mid-range. I'm just single shot. We're probably only five bullets, so... I think I'm okay to go reserve. I just have to be careful. Um, PMC, reserve, stupid risky, not a lot of extract points. Um, people are waiting for you to run to the extract after opening it or just be camping the extract or wait for people entering and exiting the extract. So you go to PMC, you go to reserve to die basically. So you only really ever go on scav, and it's also the safest place to scavenge as a scav, because of that mere fact that PMCs have very set limited options what they can do. So the chance of you running into a kitted player if you're not going into dangerous areas is very very low. Um, you have to be by the train, you have to be by the K buildings. <clears throat> I suppose um, if you're near like I don't know White Queen or something, you'll run into them a little bit. Um, but it's kind of like a mix. But if you stay to pretty set areas as a scav, like, you'll never run into anybody. If you do, that's another scav. Which you can either kill, or you can try to be peaceful with and just get a peaceful loot run. So it's a good way to get money. It's a good way to get guns. Um, it's not a good way to get things you need for a quest unless you go to, like, White Queen, where there's a lot of meds. Most of the cases for those, you have to loot it. It has to be found in raid, which means you have to find it as your PMC and then bring it back. So finding it as a scav doesn't really usually help.
this elevation. Okay, it's a VPO. I am using a VPO. Not a, the greatest weapon in the game, but if I'm hitting limbs, it's great. Okay, so the main question is, where do I want to loot? I'm thinking about just running the... Oh shit, is that a... It's not a player scout, is it? These bunkers usually don't have much in it, but I'm gonna just run down and check. It's really risky to shoot scavs as a scav because scavs are default friendly to you. Sometimes they'll even follow you. Um, if you shoot a scav, they are all hostile to you again. I spawned with 50,000 rubles? Like, no matter what, if I get out, I'm making profit. Let's go. <coughs> the broken parts don't really help me because I don't have a crafting bench yet. But, you know, I'll take what I can get. I doubt there's a break of defense here. Right, so I'm going to start running into other player scavs. I may or may not get shot. I'm going to try not to shoot anybody, but I may not have a choice. If someone sketches me out too much, I'm going to shoot him. And then I have to be really careful on the rest of the way out. I don't hear anyone. Doesn't mean no one's waiting to ambush me. Ambushing as a scab is really hard to do properly. Broken g -fode. there we fucking go. I've already got something I can trade. I just have to make sure I extract a bit. Sometimes they'll follow you. These guys are not really cool. Oh, look at that. There's a firefight going on at the cable rings. Oh, are you following me? You might be following me. Running. I don't know if that's a scab that's following me or not. Grenade box. Hey! Got a vlog grenade. So the reason I came up here because I heard someone in K buildings. I might get a shot of them. I really just want a vantage point so I know I'm not going to run into them. This lighter? Wow, dumb. Come on, open. So if I'm here and somebody runs here to try and kill the scavs here, I might be able to just pick them off. <coughs> That's my other reason, is that one of the things I can do if I don't want to just kill the scavs, I could find for someone who is killing the scavs and hopefully killing them will not make them hostile to me. 
and then I can still get the loot of the scabs that they killed. Um, now I only have 20 minutes, so I do have to be careful of my time. But, like, this map is so small, like, it doesn't take more than, like, a minute to run to any extract point. What the fuck are you? KS-23 700mm barrel? I don't even think I can wiggle that so that I can carry it. Yeah, that's, like, bigger than anything I can carry. Well, that doesn't sell for that much, but makes me wonder. <coughs> I've never been a weapon crafter myself. That sounds like it's coming from hole in the wall. Um, Alright, so. If I have the heating pipe, I've almost never die going there. Um, I do have heating pipe, so I'm going to go try and extract a heating pipe. Or that I have a... I have a decent kit for the next run, I just don't have a headset or a helmet. But I wasn't running helmet yet anyway. There's somebody else near me. Oh, I think that's my friendly scav, yeah? Scared the shit out of me. I thought I was being stalked. <laughs> oh, I don't know, Banyo. All right. So now this is a trickier part. Uh, I'm trying to go to heating pipe, but because I have to cross in front of K buildings, I might get shot, even with a scav escort who are no longer following me. And there. Are if there are raiders on the map, they're going to be walking up and down this area and going through K-Buildings. Now, if they aren't here, I'm going to have a really e easy run to the exit. Alright, I'm not here. So the only thing I have to worry about is the potential of getting ambushed here. Which if it does, I don't know if I'll have much chance to fight back, but I'm going to try. The train is here, so people are probably going to run for the train. That was a second toot, so it's about to get out. So, yep. Easy extract. I'm not getting shot here. It's never happened to me. <coughs> and we're out. stuff. And now I have a broken G-phone and a broken LED. I should be able to trade that in. I think it's I think it's Peacekeeper. I might be wrong. I don't remember what it trades for. I try to remember the combinations, but God forbid I ever try to do more than that. It's not Peacekeeper, it's probably Mechanic then. Actually, it makes more sense that that's Mechanic if it is. I want to read all of these. Huh. You trade two VPOs to get, I guess, an AK? All right, I'm not crazy. It's I need three broken LCTs and two G phones to trade for a PVS-14, which is a scope I need. I think for a mission. Um, I might just sell them then. Okay, so I've already got some profit. Um, overall. Of the money I, I started with 500,000, I've only lost 12, and I have made items that I know I can sell to make up for it. 
if I needed to. So I feel like I'm just kind of shifting funds around at this point. I also got, you know, fucking destroyed as a PMC, so I have lost more than that just out of money alone. I really need to unlock this thing. I need to find some tape. Now, if I really wanted to, I could go interchange, but I don't know the map that well, so I'm gonna have to, like, pull up a map on my side. Uh, Tarkov maps. Got a nice little folder here of some maps I play on. Interchange is just a clusterfuck for me. You know, other than like pieces, I don't think I have a big enough. You know, I don't. E I'm gonna take it back. I don't think I have a big enough alpha case to even make it worth trying to go to interchange. So, it's just if I, g at least if I go to interchange, I have a chance to stay alive. I'm more likely to. If I run into scales, I'm gonna get fucked by them. I think I have to go to customs. I think I'm kind of like strong armed into doing it right now. I'm sure these. Usually if I lose a pistol, I don't get it back. Uh, but I'm going to try insuring it this time. Because I'm still starting gear. I'm enjoying myself. I think that was... I think that's the thing that's been killing for me for like the last two years. Is that... This computer is great, but because of the form factor and it being a laptop, like, if I don't have quality stuff in it, or I'm not using it to its full this potential, I'm just fighting with tech issues half the time and sitting around waiting for loading. I have a stream goal. I have a donation goal. You know what? I don't think I've ever set that up, have I? I think my donation goal is empty. It is. Oh shoot, you know what? I don't know if I've set up half the stuff I have. <laughs> this is just a filler, isn't it? Yeah, I don't want this open. Almost time to load him. Where's my vent list? Now I'm looking at OBS because I've added stuff. I don't think I have anything in there. Yeah, I'll leave it up. Who knows? <coughs> really need to dig into this software a bit more.
we go. I didn't take my allergy meds yet. <coughs> Alright. Meds taken. Let's go. Right, this is customs. I spawned next to checkpoint. I don't think there would be a scav here. Because I spawned here. Yeah. I need to get away from this spot because this is a uh, very high traffic area at the beginning of the match. Uh, I need to stop running so much because people will hear me. Already killed a player. Sorry, bro. Wait, this isn't a player, is it? It's not a player at all. Kill the scav. How about that? My position got rushed by a scav. All right. Um. Let's get the fuck out of here. Got a low Tarkov low tens. Yeah, I don't have load, long low tens anymore. Use an SSD. Problem goes away. I just did a whole video on it. Better yet, skip to the beginning of this stream. I went over all the things that I went through to fix it. Uh, skipping the your normal stuff you would normally do, like graphics and stuff. I looked in uh, Windows Junctions and uh, Partition Management. Cleared up 64 gigabytes of... Somehow I'm not bleeding, but he blacked out my arm. Come on, reload, reload, reload. Probably not gonna survive this. <coughs> I think I ran into Rishala and his boys. Really unlucky for me. Am 
I bleeding out? I might be about to die from blood loss. No, I have fractures and I have tremors. God damn it. Well, I'm not getting out of here alive. Let's do as much damage as we can, yeah? Let's go, bitch. Who's gonna get shot first? Motherfucker. I wonder he was so hard to kill. Shell is here. I'm not getting out of here alive. I won't survive another shot. Ooh, I hitched. I think there's another player here. <laughs> not like I'll see the enemy coming to begin with. I don't think that was Rashad in his voice. I think that was just a random scav. Uh, if I'm lucky, there might be meds here. Yeah, I'm not gonna get that lucky. If I go through Dorm's Coffin like this, I'm not getting through it. That's my extract. I think, um, Trailer Park? Yeah, Trailer Park. Alright. Thankfully, it's only my arms that are fractured. My legs are intact. Yeah, my legs are okay. They're fucked up, but... I may be able to get out. <laughs> There's no way I'm not running into someone on the way there, because it's not going to hear me. Coughing and sputtering. Especially the way I'm going. Fingers crossed. Even if I see someone, like I run into someone, I might not see them with the tremors. Yeah, okay, there's a scav at the dorm. I'm just gonna cross in front and hope he doesn't see me. Shit, I'm not even halfway there yet. Usually there's somebody camping the bridge at this point of the game, so uh, it's kind of a dice roll whether or not I'm going to either run into a scav or a player camping here. My chances of survival are already basically fucking zero, but maybe I'll get lucky. Oh yeah, there's shooting over by factory. Industrial park. I don't see a scav on the road. Um, if they, if there's eyes over there, I'm just gonna run for it. Okay, wait for my stamina to get back.
see if I get fucked in the ass here. I'm not in a position for a drawn out fight. Wait, why am I blacking out? What's going on? I'm out of energy. My stomach's blacked. I have no food in my system. I'm not gonna make it. There's no way. I'm almost there. Come on. Stay awake, you piece of shit. I can see the extract. I'm not getting stamina back. I have nothing left. It's right there. Come on. I made it! Somehow. Oh, Jesus. Wait, I killed two scabs? Oh, yeah, that's right. I picked the guy off the first time. And the second guy was at gas. Oh. All right. Like I can't go out another run till he, he regens his stuff, or I eat some food. So I'm gonna do a scav run next. I can't believe I survived that. I got some decent stuff too. Like I have like another kit's worth of stuff. But still, I have just having the extra backpack is always nice. I didn't mean to take that off off. There. I had to use my bandage I brought and then an army bandage and my med pack. But I got out with an MP one fifty five and a Taz. Some cool looking aviators. I can sell for some money. And a GP7, which uh, would be nice if I could use the store, but I can't, so I'm just going to sell it. So let's sort real quick. Let's sell what we looted. Well, like, I don't really... I don't really need the aviators. They sell for a bit. The gas mask, I really don't need. If I had the workbench, I could take the filter out, but I don't. Um, I'm... Probably just gonna sell the Taz. I, like, I'm not getting any kills with it anyway. Um, unload. Where's my pistol? I didn't mean to take that off. off. Alright, mechanic. Will you buy my Taz? Or is it too shitty for you? You don't want my Taz. Does a peacekeeper want my Taz? No. Does Frapper want my Taz? No. I have to sell this shit to the fence. I'm going to be upset. I don't think anybody buys Taz. Alright. Go to the fence. Some little bits of cash. Alright. Mechanic will accept my prat. Let's get the gunsmith. So I have to modify an MP-133, and guess what I just found? I have an MP-155, so that does jack shit for me. Sigh. I'll just have to find one. Um, I gotta repair my armor. I'm 
still in a net loss. Like, I'm not really making money from these runs yet. I guess, like, I technically did if I were to sell that. Yeah, I guess, yeah, it's like barely. I'm not making money off of this. So, I have to look up the guide on what parts to get for this thing. Um, she needs silicates. I remember finding them more before. I'm not finding the loot spots right now. And I just have to kill scabs on customs. Um, so, I'm going to do a scav run at night on, well, early, early morning on reserve. Let's see if I can get some stuff I can sell. Scab is basically going to be my money maker. Uh, PMC is going to be unlocking stuff and trying to level up. Digging the super hat, hey, the Superman hat. No fucking way! I don't know you can find pistols on the ground randomly here. I never would have noticed this. Still an APS, so it's not that great, but damn, I wish I knew that. I would have been checking here more often for random pistols. Damn, alright. There we go. Got some painkillers. I got some airbits so I can make a backpack. Let's 
Yeah, so it's a safe time for me to go to the train yard, I think. Milk. Might be about to unload a magazine into someone I heard running. trying to set me up. Here he is. Ты за сранец вонючий, мать твою, а? Ну иди сюда, попробуй меня трахнуть. Я тебя сам трахну, ублюдок. I'll let him treat that as a warning shot and get the fuck out of here. <laughs> I probably scared the shit out of him. My goal really isn't to kill anybody, I'm just trying to loot. Augmenting? All right. Good. So I can s extract here right away, or I can go through cave buildings, find some small loot, and get out. I have some stuff from my hideout. Um, I didn't hear the hermetic bunker door go off, so there should not be scav raiders here yet. I've got a little bit of time. Um, I'm probably going to run into someone. Well, I've already run into someone, so... At least we got out without any blood being shed. A distant bullet, dude. <laughs> Good one. I don't really want to be here if there's someone else here. Yeah, fuck it. I'm just gonna get out. I'm trying to make money, not get killed. There's someone here extracting the chase of my film. <sighs> All right. Two very narrow and close encounters. But you know what? I got out without any blood being shed. I gotta load some stuff into backpacks. Oh, I forgot to sell this stuff. I knew I had more stuff to sell. He's got another quest for me. Oh, introduction. Yeah, I gotta go to Mike Jager in the woods.
woods. I don't even want these. Just take them. Wait, he won't buy my secret weapon parts? I could have sworn that mechanic used to. Will Prapper do it? I don't want USD on me yet. I don't have a wallet, so I don't want to mess up my money too bad. Yeah, Jaeger will do it. I forgot to sell a Taz magazine. So I have to find Jaeger in the woods, so... Hmm. I would rather not bring my scav back back there, because I'm not there to loot. And I honestly don't even want to bring a pistol, but if I don't, I'll get screwed over by the NPCs. So what I think I'll do is I'll try and bring this APS that I found. What kind of pistol ammo is in here? P. I don't actually know what kind of ammo that is, and uh, I don't care that much. Load to 5, load to 38. Load into the APS. So I have a gun. I don't think I have any... No, I wouldn't have any other magazines for this yet. Uh, I'll put on the tea glasses, just in case. Offer myself a little bit more ammo. I mean, my arms are fucking showing, so it's not like I'm exactly hidden very well. Yeah, bring the gl glasses here. The tea glasses at that. You know, glare and impact protection, the glare protection might help a little. <sighs> Fuck it, I'll bring them. It's better than nothing. If I see, uh, glinting at me. I mean, I have a pistol, so I don't know if that's going to make that big of a difference. So this, I need to find some matchboxes. Uh, I still haven't found duct tape. And I gotta find the med parts. Med parts and a syringe. I'm tempted to go to resort for that, but I, I know I won't make it out if I do, and I'm gonna be there forever. So I'm gonna go to the lab. <sighs> My issue with... Uh, did I say the lab? The, my issue with woods is that I don't know the map very well. So, I don't really always know where I am. So, I have a map pulled up. I don't know if it's going to be that helpful for me. I kind of basically have to figure out what part of the map I'm on. Like, if I'm by the lake, I'm okay. If I'm anywhere else, uh, I have to... I don't know if landmarks are going to help me too much. I'm just going to have to figure out my direction. Because I don't have a compass yet. So, this is a brand new character. I don't think I have to worry about scavs too, too much here. And any kind of engagement I think I will run into, if as long as I'm staying out of the bunkers, it should stay pretty long range. So, chance I have to use this pistol. If I get spot, I'm screwed. If I don't get spotted, I think I'm okay. I think that's how I'm gonna end up having to run this. I guess the real question is, when I pass through the lumber mill, um, am I going to take the south side, the north side, or just run through the middle like a fucking madman and get shot by everyone no matter what?
and uh, I still have to find Jaeger's camp. Ah, uh, shit. I don't think I marked on my map where Jaeger's camp was. I think it's on the west side by the crash plane. I don't remember where the crash plane is. Yes, it's by the west side. Um, so, yeah, I don't know what way I'm going, so I just gotta find something. What's the sun say? Caution! Danger! Mines! God damn it. I don't know, they were minefields here. Wide open field. And you know what? I came here without eating. I, I have my water filled up, but not my food. I may have to try and find some scabs and loot the scab house. Or I'm gonna have to make this the fastest woods run ever. Sound glitching out a little bit. Opa, man. Uh, I guess this is a breathing noise. Nah, I'm trying to loot acids or something. I think I'm at the wood now. Man, I don't know this map good enough. That's a goddamn chest rig. Goodbye, tech rig. You're insured, I'll get you back. You're the same size, but whatever. Power drill. Some belts I need. I might find some food here. Why is my sound glitching out so badly? Game is like doing weird sound glitches. Test manager, tell me what's wrong. My memory usage is high. And close Steam. Uh, I'm gonna close Discord for a bit. Was it? Still gonna do it for a bit, but it's taking us on my PC. My eight gigabytes of RAM usage. This map is generally wasn't friendly to my computer to begin with. Uh, I think the SSD is saving my ass a little bit right now. Stop. Hoping to find some. I'm not I might not survive this run anyway. Ah, 
found all these drinks. Energy. Alright, this is dumb, but I'm gonna do it. I'm eating the condensed milk. Sick and then smell, but you know what? I need to survive. Alright, um, so what am I dealing with right now? I'm dealing with pain and I guess stress relief. So after these effects wear off, I should be okay. Dehydration. Yeah, I'm not really dehydrated anymore. That should go away soon. I'm at the lake. No, I'm not. Where the fuck am I? I don't know. I don't know where I'm at. With the sound being the way that it is, I'm having a real hard time. It's like a constant reverb in my ears. Can I do anything to fix this? what's causing it. Nope. This is Tarka. It's gonna break down on me for a bit. Uh, at least I can play. Cell tower. Um, yeah, I don't fucking know where I'm at. Unless I'm right near the crane. The okay. Yeah. Am I hearing walking? Okay, I'm near the edge of the map. Um, I think I'm at the south side of the map. Why? Yeah, this I mean, like, I have no fucking clue where I am half the time of this map. Like, there are no land markers that are good for me. Uh, this may or may not be a land field. Mi minefield? kind of pointless for me to go to woods. I can't tell where the hell I am. <sighs> Any engagement at all will be long range. Yeah, it's just a waste of time. All I want to do is go to Jaeger's camp. I don't even fucking know how to get there. Yeah, I got a drill. Um, I still have my scat backpack, thankfully. I was smart enough to take that off me. Oh, shit. I didn't realize I had ammo in this. I, don't want, I want that to be empty. Oh, 
Well, I have water and food, so I could do another run. Um, you know, I'm kind of tempted to go factory, even though I know I'll get my ass kicked. Just for the fact that if I do get out, I'm getting stuff. And I am net positive in income, so I might just not want to make that risk yet. Um, and I know I need to kill scavs on customs anyway. Let's get the MP133 shotguns. Off to customs I go to hang myself. Alright, I'm gonna restart my game real quick because. Tarkov is now, and this is one of the optimization things I mentioned, like it doesn't dump shit from memory either. Like not only does it not load enough stuff in, it doesn't dump it either. So I'm at 6.8 gigabytes and it's doing that clipping noise. So it's, it's having trouble with its internal cache. So I'm just going to kill the process. I'm told it to quit, but I know it's not going to quit like it should. So kill the process. I'm going to go back to the BSG uh, launcher. That's gonna launch a new instance. Do 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 do. Play. I'm going to do one more, and then I'm going to stop the stream. I just wanted to get some good footage. <laughs> I've got to wait for it to launch and open up my main monitor, like my laptop monitor, so I can move it over. And reset the game capture. There it goes. Okay. I've never been to the lab cement, but I heard it's filled with hackers anyway. Yeah, hackers and tryhards. Can I do a scav run yet? You know, I got 30 seconds. I'm going to wait for the scav early a game enough I really should never have a reason to not wait for it can I do anything in my hideout yet probably not I don't even have the generator unlocked yet what do I need to focus Goddamn duct tape and matchboxes. The most random loot to find. Alright, this is interesting. Um, I have a sniper rifle. An SVD. Do I want to go interchange the scav? Usually, if I go to interchange a scav, like I go in so late. I'm gonna try interchange the scav and see how it goes. That's another thing that I think causes the game to glitch out too. Um, Usually you don't just play in one area when you play, you go to all these different areas. After I've loaded into at least two different areas, the game performance degrades. And at, when I get to the third one, I get issues like I did before. So I usually have to pick between playing Customs and Reserve and maybe Factory. But if I go anywhere else, my game's going to just shit bricks until I restart it. Now, I may not actually go into any of the stores on Interchange. That's the interesting thing. I don't know what I'm going to do yet. 
I might just stay outside the buildings. Get some basic low level loot that I need to level up. Like some stuff I know I can find on the shelves in there. But if there's people running around with like night vision goggles and teched out gear for the hallway fights, I'm not ready for it. Oh, I can start up my uh, Twitter and the Discord again. Ha! <laughs> I said I'm gonna not go into the store and then I spawn in it. Okay. I'm in an area where people like to be ratty, so uh, maybe I'll be okay. Zarya grenade. Alright, good. I'm right. I know where I'm at. I'm at the loading docks. What's one with the Taz? Okay, it looks like a Taz in my hand, but it's actually an SVD. Or an SV98. There's Discord. Let's go. Hoping to find nuts, bolts, things I can use to build my stuff. Ah, spark plug. I need that. That's the darn. Don't have an alpha container as a scab, so I have to extract alive if I want any of this stuff. Headset. Comptac 2 headset at that. Yeah, look at how much better that sounds. Headset off, all the background noise. Headset on. Echoey footsteps, too. Hardly any background noise. Clear footsteps. I love the Comptac. It much easier to hear someone too. Um, so now here's the interesting part. I don't know where the extract is. Um, it's a scav camp. So I believe that's in the northeast part of camp. Yeah. Mm. Scav camp. camp is actually the south side. Um. What side of the building is the loading docks? I have no fucking clue how to read this map. Well, I, I kind of know where it is. So. I also know I'm kind of not anywhere near there. Yeah, I hear gunshots back up there, so I'm just going to go through the building. I've never done a scabbard on this map before. This is 
a risk spot for me to be going for this, yeah. That's what I'm worried about. Somebody killed him, he didn't loot him. So they're probably worried about getting caught too. Alright, gotta go fast. I'm probably watching here. Eating one, but I know there's people here. Shit, there's someone behind me. I can hear him. I gotta get out. Watching me. He's trying to pick me up. Right, I think I lost him. I don't know if he's gonna follow me all the way out here. Holy shit, man. I knew I was being stalked, but the fact that I shot, I think I made him hesitate just long enough. I got nine minutes to find the scav extract. Um, I'm on the wrong side of the map. I'm honestly not too sure what the right side of the map is. I think it's on the other side going that way. The only reason I'm running out of the sidewalk is because I don't think I'm going to run into anybody else here because it's a really open spot. Most people are either going to be in or they're going to be a little bit further out or they're going to be watching for people coming in. So if they see me, I don't know if they'll be able to get me, if that makes sense. Unless, they've, unless they're looking to specifically chase after me. Which I definitely lost that guy now. how lucky I am he didn't shoot me oh, crackers there's face oh yeah I guess I am a little fool oh, not the hat oh, 
crackers. Okay, I think I'm at the right side now. So I need to find the scav camp. Uh, which also means I need to hug the wall. play on your chain. There's a loading box. Um, I think I might have fucked myself. And I think I went around the building. <laughs> no, wait. Railway XL. I think this is the way to Railway XL. If not, I'm on the wrong side of the railway. No, no. This is the Railway XL. Okay. Yeah, I'll be fine. Dead wrong, aren't I? This isn't the railway expo. I think this is an extract, but I don't think it's mine. No, it is mine! Okay, it's the Embercom checkpoint. Yep, yeah, see, that's how fucking lost I am. Um, I hope, I think someone just tried to shoot me, too. So I am in the north right um, corner of the map. Um, I'm just not in the right area for the scav. I've actually, I would have had to go left. No, I think I came on the scav. Well, anyway, I'm in the northeast side, and I'm literally on the opposite side of the map of where I wanted to go. So I was actually at the Scav camp, um, which is where the Rev Railway one. But because I I turned the corner of the building trying to get away from that guy and running down the sidewalk, I just ended up going the wrong way. Which is fine with, for me, because Scav extract meant I could extract pretty much anywhere. Ooh, and no space. I need to nest some stuff. for things I don't want to throw away so I can put them in pockets. sell some of that stuff, or I can keep some of that stuff, or I can do runs with some of that stuff. This is a good place to stop. I don't actually know if I want to stop. Stop. Uh, even though I kind of do. Yeah, now I can do one more run. Not like I don't have stuff to sell now. Like this is getting sold. sold. This is definitely getting sold. Kill the sword. Yeah, this is sold. Thank you for 
pistol by the thermometer. Yeah, that's a decent pretty penny. Nice. Okay. I'll do one more. Because I'm going to go to customs. I think I'm going to do a scav run. A scav case run. Okay, alpha... What the fuck are you called? An alpha case? Okay, I'm calling you an alpha case. An alpha case run. So I'm just gonna bring the bare minimum for a starting gear set. I'm gonna try and find stuff I need. And I'm gonna try and kill things if I run into them. Everything's already insured. Uh, the blue armor is nice, but it's damaged. It also is very shiny, and I'm not doing the, um, what do you call it? The USEC. The UN cosplay on woods where I have to do shit wearing it. So. Another thing that I think I might do is just money grind for a bit and level up by just doing stuff and playing the game versus doing all the quests. Like, if I run across the quests, I'll grab them, but I think I'm just going to try and hit up to level 15 to where I can use a store and then start money grinding. And then once I'm in a better spot, I can do some of these quests a little bit easier. With three magazines, I don't think I'm going to go through three magazines without dying. Or I'm going to be, like, barely holding on to life at that point. I'm usually pretty efficient with my ammo. <laughs> but if I don't get a third magazine, I realize I need it. That means I've been killing things for a while, and I don't have enough to defend myself. So one mag is for killing, hopefully, and the other ones are for self-defense mixed in. And that is just fucking getting out. That's what I'm looking for. What is for hunting too is for self defense. Use one magazine. That's your goal to get out. Start getting out. I don't have a helmet, so if I get topped of head. Or just head anywhere, I'm gonna die. I should have got a penis on that. There we go. Bolts. I got some G powder. That's good stuff. I got this. I need that.
probably somebody already in there too. What? What about it? Okay. Scales. Here's probably where I'm going to run into something. There might be a scab in the construction site. Patrolling the area. Let me see if I can get the drop on him. Are you walking anywhere yet?
Well, this is a dangerous part, because usually there's snipers up there. Or the people will run. And I heard a ton of gunfire earlier, so this area has probably also been looted. So I just need to try and get past it. And head toward extract. I bet that's a gas station. Gas station and dorms. I'm also really hoping I don't get shot and bleed. Because I have stuff to deal with one bleed and I have one thing stuff to do with one heavy bleed. Anything beyond that, like I'm not healing for nothing. Yeah, I think all those gunshots and explosions are coming from dorms. So somebody may have already come in here and keyed the store. Or somebody could be camping it. Um, it is not open though. So it looks like nobody has opened it already. So I'm just going to keep going down this way. It's a little unsafe and I don't actually think I can cross here without going through the wire. But I can, so I just have to walk through it. Uh, I don't see any scouts here right away. Поднажали, парни! Еще немного! Пацаны! Fuck, it's a grenade! Oh! Get down! I think that's Rashala and his boys. Get me the fuck out of here. I can't deal with that. Ooh. Yep, that's for Shaolin his boys. So now I'm beyond that point. I didn't run into any players yet, so my chances of running into them just drastically gone up. Because otherwise, I'm sure somebody would have jumped them already. Um, it's possible I could run into a small camp here or an extra camp. Here. I'm really hoping not. I'm gonna go through the building. Somebody's looted this building already. And my chance of there being an extra scamper just went up exponentially. could be outside waiting in the bushes or he's probably as a is a tradition sitting at the door all right cool no one's here i'm out all right and i'm going to call it here 
so yep that is just proof these changes make you play tuck off real fucking smooth no more hitching no more lag no more stuttering only thing that happens is if you play on too many maps and uh, then the fix is just restart the game because it's a RAM issue and uh, Tarkov is trying to overload your cache. That's it. Bye.